I was the guy who always explained everything to everybody else, so that, that yeah. kind of made me like a teacher already. So I wasn't really a teacher, but because I, they would send me to training and then I had to explain to all the other 20 techs, right. you know, how, how you fix the car. So they, they decided I was pretty good at it, and that, that helped a lot when it came to trying to teach us class. When I came here, there was nothing. There was no worksheets, nothing. I didn't even have a video recorder. I was left with a shop that was full of crud, and there you go, have a good day. So I started with nothing. All right. How long have you been teaching at Gun, and what are some things that have changed since you started here? 26 years. Um, <laughs> I think I'm on my eighth principle. <laughs> about lived them all. About lived them all. Yeah. Um, there used to be, when I first started here, there was one principal and one assistant principal. And now there's one principal and five. They have too many admin, they have too many things. Five assistant principals? Yeah. Yeah, so the schedule, just terrible, it's absolutely terrible. The worst schedule ever. <laughs> and uh, what else? Um, when I first came here, I didn't have a classroom. I had a very, very small room, mm -hmm. uh, which is the build room that we have, uh, the surf woody in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted a real classroom because everybody came in with Backpacks and there were, them on a dirty floor. there were 30 chairs in that little space. If you can imagine that, people were stepping on each other. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, I'd really like a classroom. And they had a computer class in the classroom that we have now. Mm -hmm. And they had so many computers in it that it would melt the computers. The computers were failing. Interesting. And so they decided, and we had no air conditioning. Right. So they said, okay, we'll give you this classroom. Right, because they're not working anymore. Yeah, because the, the com com computers were melting. So they went ahead and gave me the classroom, and then eventually they came in and put the air conditioning in. Right. So, yeah. So you can get hot in here. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. So I've seen that change. You know, and then we bu I bought, you know, four, three hoists and you know, added to the tool collection, added to the equipment, you know, got newer equipment. The compressor conked out the first year. It was just a little, you know, like a home compressor, trying to run all this stuff. That's ridiculous, you know. So we got a real, a man's compressor, you know, an industrial compressor. And luckily at the time, when I first started, there was actually, well, my first year I had no money. But the second year I actually had some money. Of and your so own pocket, or does the school pay you back? The school, it was actually funded by the state. It was a lot of money. Uh, originally, but then eventually it tapered off. But that's how we got the hoist, that's how we got the compressor, that's, that's right. how we got all the stuff to make it more modern and actually right. be able to do stuff. Usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usable. That's a good word. But yeah, we even, the kids and I even painted this shop. Well, you mentioned that. We painted the shop ourselves. That's really activity, but it was fun when he demonstrated it. Um, 
Let's see what else. I do like when he makes us do the jobs for him that are really just free labor. I think that's funny. <laughs> um, and then, let's see what else. I think trying to figure out where he got the Model T scene from, because that is still a mystery and I don't know where he got it. <laughs> step up and you know throw some money this way and, nice. you know really impressive and the parents were, were gung-ho you know they saw what I was doing they believed in it it's pretty cool so, also I remember you said you like you went out and you went to the funding buckets and wanted, wanted to give you any funding. oh yeah you know we didn't have any funding buckets for auto in fact they literally told me I could not ask for donations trailer. <laughs> what makes Gun Auto special? Well, it's basically just the uh, free environment. You just do whatever you want. Kind of like bring in engines, bring in cars, and you do anything and it's very unstructured. There's a passion that the teacher has that you don't see with many teachers at all at anywhere on the campus. So the learning is better and if you care about the subject, if you care about cars, you'll learn more than you do anywhere else because it's hands-on and you just get to it. And I think also there's so much stuff in the shop. There's so much supplies and equipment that you can't you can't get bored. There's always something to do. And if you like working with your hands or you get bored easily, this is the class to go to. It's just very special. We're just kind of wrapping things up, putting stuff together that I never got around to. So on our 55 Ford truck, we're, we're actually assembling the bed. We've already done all the woodwork and stained it and everything and um, never really started to put it back together, but um, we're almost there. I'll get some pieces machined from my friend and then we'll come back and we'll drill holes and we'll put all that wood and lay that wood in there. 
and uh, put it all together with stainless steel bolts so that it doesn't rust and the back of the truck will look spiffy. So we're working on that. Uh, I've got the last Model T chassis. This will be our fifth Model T. That uh, I had an engine on a stand that we would run, a rotary engine, and it's like, what would it be like to put a rotary engine in a Model T? So um, we're we're darn close. This will be the end of the third quarter, and uh, we've got to mess with the drive shaft and play with the spring perches and uh, hook up some cooling system, and a throttle linkage. But it's almost there. It'll run before the end of the year. So, and there's a couple of cars that I'm moving out, you know. The Red Note was going to my brother. The, the number 56 car is coming with me. The Jawbone's going out too, right? Uh, my, I f over the weekend I found out that the guy who was interested in Javelin kind of flaked out, so now i am got to put the word out then. How much are you selling it for? Um, best offer. What was the best offer? Well, uh, we were talking about seven. $7,000. It's a, it's a collector car.